Today, we're going to talk about consciousness, drugs, sleep, and dreams. How exciting is that? Consciousness is like, you know, the most interesting topic in all of psychology for many people. Uh, here's a basic definition from John Searle. Uh, consciousness consists of inner qualitative subjective states and feelings of aw or awareness. You know, you can provide these definitions, but it's kind of, okay, that's pretty much circular. Like it feels like something. Well, what does it feel like? This is going to turn out to be the biggest question, right? Going back to all these questions of subjectivity, um, subjective states. What is, what are subjective states? How do we define a subjective state? What does that even mean? Also a, a common assumption that uh, consciousness has a kind of unity based on our own subjective experience, that there's something kind of specific and, and coherent about consciousness. But all these attempts to define it uh, really fall short, and that's really the essence of the problem. Chalmers identified this as the hard problem of consciousness and to be distinguished from easier kinds of problems. And at, at the essence of it, it's just the same kind of classic, basic, fundamental problem. How do we reconcile? How do we understand the nature of our subjective experience within some kind of objective understanding of the physical universe, right? How do we possibly uh, figure out what properties of our brain uh, give rise to our subjective feelings in a way that kind of captures the actual kind of fundamental challenging question what does it feel like, okay? And this is the problem of qualia, the quality, coming up with some new terms here, but I mean, qualia means, what does it feel like? It's fundamentally the subjective perspective. There's no way around it. What it feels like is absolutely the subjective problem of consciousness. It feels like something to be this brain, right? But how could I possibly communicate to somebody else what it feels like to be subjectively this brain? And how can I possibly connect this sort of subjective experience to all the detailed properties of my, of my uh, brain in such a way that I could basically say, well, if you did this in some kind of artificial system, for example, you would experience this, right? This subjective experience. And again, if somebody else has had the same subjective experiences, I can refer to those experiences and I can try to capture those experiences in poetry or literature or other ways, you know, movies, et cetera. And people who have had those subjective experiences can be like, yeah, yeah, that's what it felt like for me too, right? You can recognize other people's subjective experiences. And sometimes you're like, no, I don't even know what they're even feeling or talking about. That's so weird. Um, but fundamentally, if you haven't had the subjective experience already, how could you possibly convey to someone kind of what it feels like, right? <laughs> so uh, that's the challenge. And, and, and the hard problem that Chalmers identifies is that that's probably impossible. One of the conclusions from this is that there is a kind of dualism. And uh, this goes back again to Descartes the key point that, that we really want to identify in this treatment of it here is that there are two different kinds of dualism, okay? These dueling dualisms. Uh, there's substance dualism, which says that the mind is fundamentally separate from uh, physical matter. And that's the classic kind of dualism. That's the, that's the Cartesian dualism going back to Descartes. And, and Chalmers seems to uh, endorse that same kind of dualism. But there's a different kind of dualism that avoids all the problems with this kind of substance dualism, that, that somehow there's a different kind of thing in the universe that's totally separate from the physical universe. And, and you know, the big problem with that, of course, is how do you ever get these two different things that have totally different realities or whatever to ever interact? It's like, uh, what is that? So there's a kind of dualism that is much more consistent, mutually consistent, which is just this perspective dualism, okay, which says fundamentally that there is something that it feels like subjectively to be a thing, right? Um, and we can talk about like, you know, what, how, how far that goes and where you might want to apply that. But that fundamentally, there is an inside internal perspective of being a thing and why we can feel this thing 
uh, why we can know and talk about what it feels like to be this brain. Um, you know, that's all about kind of sort of the easy problems of psychology that, that uh, Chalmers identified, the things that involve kind of our ability to uh, access our mental states. Um, we'll talk more about those kind of easy problems in a second. In fact, the hard problem is just fundamentally that it's subjective. And, and, and really that's the key point is that there, there is an ineffable, critical, you know, impenetrable divide between uh, the subjective experience and the objective experience. And it's not because my subjective experience is somehow, you know, uh, made of a different substance. It's because it is fundamentally subjective. I just don't have else to say it. I keep saying it over and over again. And so, you know, from my uh, experience, you know, first of all, we have to go back to Descartes and say, the subjective experience is, is primary every, you know, that's the only thing we, we know for certain. But uh, if you choose to believe in an objective reality and because subjective experience is primary, that really is a choice, right? For me, in my subjective world, I choose to believe in an objective reality out there. And in so doing, if I think about all the different things that I know, um, my whole life's work really has been about uh, understanding how the objective properties of my brain, as far as I can understand them in my subjective lens here, um, how I can put together a consistent story that makes sense of everything that we know about the brain and how that kind of connects with my subjective experience. And to me, in my estimation, it all kind of matches. The things that I know about how my brain works fit with the nature of my own subjective experience. And so you might think, okay, well, there's no dualism then, because now I have this picture that's coherent and it's consistent, and, and I can explain to someone, you know, here's how I experience different kinds of subjective states and how those map onto different kind of properties of the brain. I can do that, okay? And this is something that we can do. And, and again, these are in some ways the kind of easy problems that Chalmer, I, you know, relegated to the, the kind of domain of science and, and things that he, he believed that you could actually do. Um, but the fundamental gap that remains, and some people just don't quite understand this gap. And I think Chalmers is really critical in identifying this gap that, you know, you can do all this description of these kind of neural mechanisms, but if you haven't had that subjective experience, no amount of kind of describing all these neural mechanisms and all these different parts of the brain and everything is going to convey the subjective experience of what it feels like. So there's still the gap, right? And so that's the sense in which uh, you, you, you can't really ever put together a sufficiently complete story of objective reality that is so good, so powerful, so complete that it lets you know kind of what it feels like to be that brain, right? And that that gap is the hard problem. I think it is is irreducible. I don't I don't see any way around it. Um, and and so therefore, you know, I think there is a, a kind of dualism, an irreducible, uncrossable gap. But I'm happy with that. I'm fine with that. I don't think it puzzles me. It doesn't. It doesn't create any kind of existential crisis. I don't have to invent a new kind of substance. Um, I just have to recognize that there's this different perspective on the world and that we can never kind of get in there and kind of, you know, turn that into something that other people can experience. And that's kind of what we discussed previously. Two different people can't occupy the same brain at the same time. Uh, if you are the brain, it's a kind of identity relationship, right? And so... Uh, what it feels like is what it feels like to be that brain. Basically, the bottom line is you have to be a brain to know what it feels like to be a brain. End of story. Okay.